call the May meeting of the Haywood County Board of Education to order. At this time, board members, would you please rise for the board prayer? And Mr. Rogers, would you lead us in our invocation this evening? Kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you again for giving us the opportunity to be here. We want to thank you, Lord, as you can well see all the people here, all the accomplishments of the children of this county, and the great school system we have. And Lord, we thank you that you give us the tools and give us the abilities and the resources that we can offer to our teachers and our students to help them have the best education possible in this county. And thank you for the great staff that this school system has from the tops to the bottoms and everywhere around in the community support Lord we thank you for the parents grandparents friends families of these <coughs> children in this county we pray that you give them a good safe ending to the nice school year and the great accomplishments and the grades to show it and Lord we pray that you be with this board that any decisions that we make will only in betterment the schools that we have in this county God, and direct us in all that we do, and we'll give you the praise and the glory for it all. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Good lungs back here. Just want to announce that Ms. Barrett will not be able to be with us tonight. She had something come up at the last minute and was not able to be here. Board members, our next regular board meeting will be held here at the Education Center on June the 11th at 7 o'clock. Uh, the graduation dates, um, the Haywood Community Learning Center is uh, Tuesday, June the 5th at Haywood Community College at 6 p.m. Tuscola High School, Friday, June the 15th at 7 p.m. at Western Carolina University Ramsey Center. Pisgah High School, Saturday, June 16th, uh, 11 a.m. at Western Carolina University at the Ramsey Center. Um, Central Haywood High School, Saturday, June the 16th at 3 p.m. at Haywood Community College. Don't forget about the quick draw, Saturday, May the 19th from 4.30 to 9.30 at Law Ridge Country Club. Uh, the Partners in Education Reception Awards is uh, Monday, May the 21st. Uh, 5.30 is the reception, 6 o'clock is when the awards will be uh, given, and that's at Tuscola High School. Uh, the Haywood County Schools Art Show uh, will be held May 22nd through the 24th uh, at 3.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Hayeswood Conference Center. I also have received an invitation to the board and others in education and leaders in the community um, for a leadership night, and the speaker is going to be Sheriff Greg Christopher, and that's down at the... Uh, Tent Revival at Deadwood Baptist Church. I believe that's on um, at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, May the 22nd. Is that correct? Second. 22nd. Okay. But all of us have been invited, anyone involved in education and leaders in the community. So make plans to attend if you may. Under agenda adjustments, do we have anything we need to add to the agenda from finance or from? Finance has a couple of items. All right. We'll add them just at the regular time of the finance committee. Do we have anything from building and grants at this time? Nothing to mind. Okay. Very good. I would like to announce that if uh, at 8 o'clock I'm going to have to leave, and at that time I'll turn the gavel over to my vice chair, uh, Jim Francis, at that time. I've got a, a company meeting that I have to attend, and it's a long, long way, as they say. <laughs> so I'll be leaving at uh, 8 o'clock. Anything else on agenda adjustments or announcements? Okay. Mr. Ron Moss, you're first on the agenda. Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, tonight's Spotlight Featured School is Bethel Elementary. 
The administrative staff includes Kim Shipman, the principal, Amanda Watson, the assistant principal, and Alma Wells, the lead teacher. And I can attest to the fact that the entire staff at Bethel Elementary School holds students to the highest expectations. The school is also uh, exhibitive of a culture that is student-centered and it's very nurturing. No doubt their presentation tonight will exemplify these characteristics of the school and demonstrate why they've been named a Title I Distinguished School and why the school is high performing. It is my pleasure to introduce Kim Shipman, the principal. Thank you, Mr. Mollis. And thank you, Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Nolte. Thank you so much for this opportunity to highlight and spotlight Bethel Elementary School and the good things that are happening at Bethel. Um, we want to try to capture that in a few ways tonight. Um, first, I want to just say a few words about the things that we're really focusing on this year at our school. Um, throughout our instruction this year, we've really been working um, to teach students more about text structure and to get them to be able to identify um, the text structure um, with any given text that they're given so that they can more deeply understand the text and have better comprehension. And we've been using some graphic organizers school-wide um, so that when students identify a text structure, they also have a graphic representation that they can go to to better organize the information that they encounter in the text. So that's one of the things that we've really been focusing on this year because we want our students to have deeper comprehension of the things that they're reading. And we know that with that reading, we know that that, that really impacts their writing as well. So another focus that we've had at our school this year has been an emphasis on writing across the curriculum. And tonight you're gonna to be able to hear um, some examples of the students' writing that they've worked on throughout the year this year. Um, and at this time, what I would like to do is just ask anybody that is here um, to support Bethel Elementary School, if you'll just raise your hand at this time, because we have a house full, and I want to thank them so much for their support. Um, that is something that we can always count on at Bethel, is the support of our students and our staff and the community. We have such strong support, and I'm so thankful for that, and I'm so proud to be at Bethel. Um, I want to invite our readers. They brought a piece of writing with them tonight, and I want to invite them to come up. And their teachers are here to support as well. So if you guys would come on up, we're going to share some of that writing. While they're coming, I want to share a quote. Um, there was an article that I came across in some of my reading, and it's called Demystifying Writing, Transforming Education. And in this article, there was a great quote by David Conley, and it says, writing enables deeper thinking and learning in every content area. Let's teach it in every content area. Having students write across the disciplines would transform K-12 education. If grounded in generous amounts of reading and discussion, this practice could have more impact on college and career success than any other factor. And so um, with that, um, I want to have our students share some of that writing that they've worked on this year. And students, if you would please, let's line up to my left. Let's start with kindergarten and let's bring the line across and let's face our board members, okay? So that you can read your writing.
Hi, my name is Dana Moritz, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Bethel, and I absolutely love teaching at Bethel, love my principal, love these sweet children, and tonight we're going to be sharing some of our writing. First, we're going to start with Nellie Jackson, and normally I don't do any prompt writing, but this young lady has a heart of gold, and so the writing that she wanted to share is actually a gift to her mother. And so she's going to be sharing something that's called, Does a Kindergartner Have a Mother Too? We've been studying about Eric Carl, and so we were going off the book, Does a Kangaroo Have a Mother Too? And so mom has not seen this yet, but she's going to be reading the book that she made for her mom, Nellie Jackson. My, my mom, my my mom's name is Keisha. Oh, wow. <laughs> my favorite thing about my mom is she loves me. Very good. <laughs> my favorite thing to do with my mom is swim with her in the summer. It's illustrated. I love it when my mom and I read f books that are funny. <laughs> I love it when my mom and I go to church and I can sing. Oh, okay. And my next young lady is Evangeline Clark. And we do narrative writing, persuasive writing, opinion writing. And so she chose one of her narrative pieces of writing that she'd like to share with you this evening. Evangeline, ready? My special present. Show it, show it. Okay, that was awesome. One Christmas evening, I woke up. I went into the living room. I saw a present that looked special. I was hoping it was a tablet. I opened it up I, and took it, took tablet. I thought my mom would never get it for me. <laughs> I'm Michelle Davis and I teach first grade at Bethel and we also have been working on narrative informational and opinion writing and this is Olivia Higgins and she is going to share one of her narrative pieces of writing. Discovery box. On a beautiful Friday, we were going on a field trip. We were going to the gem mine. It is a place where you discover rocks. On 
Once we got inside, this man was inside. He talked to us a lot about rocks. We use flashlights, tiles, and magnifying glasses. We use the flashlights for seeing if a rock was shiny or not. We use the towers for seeing if a rock left a mark or not, and the magnifying glasses was for seeing a rock close up. It was fun. I learned so much about rocks. I love discovering rocks. I'm Ellen Smith-Muse. I'm a second grade teacher. We also have been working on informational narrative and opinion writing. She Aspen, this is Aspen Long, and she has worked very hard on an opinion piece about a pet. Have you ever wanted a class pet? Well, I want a guinea pig. One reason I want a guinea pig is because it is easy to take care of. For example, all you need to do is just brush brush it, feed it, and water it, and clean it, its cage every day. But sometimes you have to wash its fur, and sometimes you don't have to clean out its cage. Another reason why we should have a guinea pig is because it's fun. It is fun because the guinea pig gets lots of exercise every day. And so you can not bother your teacher while you are waiting on something or you have extra time and you have nothing to do at that time. Last reason is you can give it a funny name. For example, I heard a guinea pig was called Sprinkles, Jelly Bean, or Muncho. And this is why you should get a guinea pig for a classroom pet. My name is Meredith Allen. I teach third grade, and this is Kylie Webb. We've been working on informational writing, and we've planned it out in our writing journals, and then we have typed it up on the Chromebook. So this is a magazine article, and you can take it away. <sighs> the great outdoors. Wait, where are the trees? You see, we're a big problem to the environment. We're cutting down trees as fast as the storybook invention in the Lorax. We need to stop dropping the mankind anvil on top of the trees. And that goes for all of us. Trust me, there are terrible consequences. Don't believe me? Keep reading. Consequences. Where do I even start? Lots of things could happen. For example, if we don't help, we could go without heat because some happy campers use logs for fires, which create heat. Also, we use logs for homes. Dream on, log cabin dreamers. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things that trees provide for us. They do things like clean our air for us, provide homes for us, and give us heat. We are thankful to have trees, and we couldn't live without them. Joke corner. Jack? Mom, can I have $20? Mom, no, do you think money grows on trees? Jack, well, yeah, all they're missing is dollar signs. <laughs> <laughs> How can we help? We can help by remembering not to cut down trees. Also, you may be able to help by joining a local group that helps out too. Hi, my name is Allie Marlowe. I teach fourth grade at Bethel. Um, Mason Putnam is here with me tonight. In fourth grade, in our science curriculum, we study rocks and minerals. So to learn a little bit more about how rocks and minerals are classified and used, and to also work on our informational writing skills, Mason wrote a report about one specific mineral that he's going to share with you. 
All about iron. Did you know iron may have a slight amount of titanium? Well, if you did, you're probably an an, ex, an iron expert. If you didn't, if you didn't know, you're not an expert on iron. And I'm here to make you one. The properties of iron are hardness four and a half. The color of iron is ironish black. The luster is metallic. Iron's parency is op opaque. A cleavage is none. Streak is brownish reddish orange. Where is iron found? I know. It's found all throughout the United States, mainly in Russia, Brazil, Australia, and India, but found excellently near Lake Superior regions. Now, once you find iron, what is it used for? It's used for construction, automobiles, trucks, trains, train tracks, magnets, and, and much more for its strength. In conclusion, remember, if you think you found iron, remember you have background knowledge about it now. Hello, I'm Heidi Ash, and this is my friend Heidi Hanna. I teach fifth grade at Bethel, and we took a little different approach in our writing today, but I want to tell you, we sing a song at Bethel, some of you know if you've been around any time, Bethel the beautiful, Bethel the best. So my prompt for her and for our class was, what makes Bethel the best? And Heidi had a short little answer, but let me tell you, it was powerful, and I can't wait for you to hear it. I think what makes Bethel the best is not the subjects or the classes. It's not how the school looks or how it runs, but it's about the people, the teachers and the principal and the staff and the students. It's about everyone who goes there and that they are important, each and every one of us. It's about learning and having fun at the same time. That's what makes Bethel the best. I'm Courtney Myers and I also teach fifth grade and we responded to the same prompt. We've been working on argumentative writing. So this is David Brooks, and he is going to make everyone fall in love with Bethel tonight. Oh. <laughs> Dear readers, to a, or is, whomever is listening, I would just like to declare that Bethel is the best. If you fail to agree, here's why. Bethel solves problems. This, this year, there were almost 28 kids to every class in the fifth grade. There, there was a very similar problem in the fourth grade as well. Instead of panicking, hyperventilating, or freaking out, we hired another teacher for both grades and proceeded with our lives. <laughs> Due to a multitude of kids here at Bethel, P the, the PTO is able to make things happen. The fundraisers that they set up are pretty cool in my opinion. There's things like Santa's Workshop or Miss Artie Panson's Night. But my personal favorite is Xerox. The Rock. People pay a certain amount, and their ki kid's name gets on the rock when it's their birthday. This money is used to buy technology. Bethel gets awarded. We have been awarded a lot in the years I've been at Bethel. When I was in fi first grade, we were award one of the three schools to be awarded with a Distinguished Reading Award. I received it when th I read 357 books in six weeks. Let's just say my head hurt. <laughs> Let's talk football. My best friend was awarded the, with the Scotty Cantor award, Sportsmanship Award. Also, our PT, PE teacher was awarded Best in the State. Bethel is a winner. When I was in kindergarten, the Bethel football team won the Super Bowl. When I was in second grade, and again in third grade, we won the Science Olympiad. Finally, last year, when I was in fourth grade, we won the Hay Haywood County Battle of the Books competition. For the second year in a row now, we've won the county's competition and later won the regional competition. Bethel uses technology to do a lot of things. We use technology to practice reading, math, and typing. Also for writing reports and making biographies. We even have a little thing called Flex, where our librarian teaches the older kids how to use computer programs like Microsoft Pl Bleh. Publisher to make bro brochures. Our AIG teacher t program uses the computers to teach the fourth graders how to code. In Battle of the Books, we use the computers to practice answering questions on our expert books. In Science Olympiad, we use the Chromebooks to learn about our events. Now let's talk teachers, and not just them, principals. They use, their com they use computers to make plans and teach us. Bethel has heritage. If you guys think I'm long, this is the last paragraph. <laughs> 
Here at Bethel, we have heritage. I don't know about anyone else, but I four generations of my family has been a Bethel. My papa graduated from the high, Bethel High School. Um, the second generation was my nana and her brother and sister. The third generation was my 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 nana's kids, or my mom, my aunt, and my uncle. The fourth generation, or mine, consists of the four of us, me and my cousins, Layla, Nellie, and Lane. Well, Lane hasn't been here yet. I will also send my kids here one day. If you still disagree, I give up. Sincerely, David Brooks. <laughs> Students and thank you teachers, you did an amazing job. I would like to recognize Miss Chen. It's hard to capture all the great things about Bethel. It's really hard to capture all the great things, but we want to show you some of the fun and some of the learning. And so Miss Chen has put together an amazing video and we're gonna close with the video. Bethel, we keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we are curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Walt Disney. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. Ben Franklin. To understand is to invent. Jen Piaget. Thank everyone from Bethel Elementary School for coming tonight, and uh, especially for the children that read for us tonight. That was very special. Thank you so very much. Two of those were my grandkids, by the way. All right. <laughs> what was that first one? Yeah.
Mr. Henson's claiming two of the kids, and we were all up here, and we were looking for the tissues a minute ago whenever she was doing the Mother's Day. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Mr. Moss again, and Kim. That's what I meant by high expectations, student-centered and nurturing. I think they proved that. Absolutely. <laughs> Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, the third annual Region 8 Elementary Battle of the Books was held on April 24th. Bethel Elementary competed with teams from Buncombe County, Cherokee County, Henderson County, Polk County, and Transylvania County. Battle of the Books is sponsored by the North Carolina School Library Media Association, and students read a variety of literature representing many different kinds of literary styles and viewpoints by renowned authors. And then Kim will explain what they do with their reading. Not only do they excel um, at, at the regional competition, but they also won our local competition to get there. So they competed with all eight of our elementary schools for that honor. And, and let me tell you, it was a really tough competition this year, very competitive. Um, Battle of the Books is a quiz bowl style competition where team members read 15 novels. These novels represent a variety of quality authors and are specifically chosen to challenge the reader. Once a question is read, the team members have 20 seconds to collaborate with one another and answer the questions. And you can see this is our list of Battle of the Books um, books for this year. So you have authors such as Gary Paulson or Joyce Moyer Hotstetter. Um, not only does Battle of the Books instill a love of learning, but it engages team members. They have to work together collaboratively and problem solve to answer those questions. So tonight, I would like to recognize Bethel Elementary's Battle of the Books team and um, call on Miss Chen and Miss Wells, who are the coaches for this year's team, to come up and present certificates. Chairman Francis, uh, school board members, Dr. Nolte, I cannot brag about these folks enough. Um, Every student on the team read all 15 books, um, and it's pretty hard when they're asking you any random question and you have to figure out out of 15 books which book it is and what the author is. Um, so I'm very, very proud of them. Um, David Brooks, come on up. <laughs> Naomi Caminetti. Matthew Clark, <laughs> Keisha Eckenrod, <laughs> Heather Engel, <laughs> Olivia Passwaters, <laughs> Hampton Shipman. Jackson Thompson, Anna Warren, Jack Yearling, Ruthie Collins, Cooper Crook, Daniela Mendoza, Addison Messer. Good job, guys.
Next on our agenda, Mr. Mark Shepard. No, Ms. Valier. Jenny, I'm Jenny, sorry. For get away. Employee recognition. Go ahead and get it, Jenny. Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, this is one of the best things that I get to do in my job is recognize the employees of the year. And we have 10 categories that we're going to recognize tonight. And so Mr. Haney is going to help me recognize some of them. I'm not, I'm not sure if they're all here, but we'll call them and hopefully they'll come up. Thank you, Jenny. Board members, uh, Dr. Nolte, Chairman Francis, it's an honor for me to tell you about our bus driver of the year. 2017-18 bus driver of the year is presented to Adam Perry. Adam has been a bus driver for 22 years in Haywood County Schools. Adam is not only a bus driver, but works all day at Tuscola High School in the in-school suspension class. I quote, without Adam, our school would not function as well as it does. He does his job with class and dignity. It's my pleasure to recognize Adam Perry, Haywood County School Bus Driver of the Year. You think Adam's either cleaning a bus at Tuscola or on a field trip somewhere. We're not sure, but we'll make sure he gets this. Next one I get to recognize is uh, Custodian of the Year. The 2017-18 custodian year is Lori Hobbs. Lori has been with Haywood County Schools for more than 10 years. I quote, patience, kindness, and dedication are just three of her many positive attributes we could use to describe Lori. She never makes students feel bad, even when her actions add to her already heavy workload. Central Haywood High School is so proud of Lori Hobbs, Haywood County Schools custodian of the year. Mr. Haney, Mr. Haney, Mr. Haney, I don't mean to interrupt you, but just make sure your boots and shoes are clean before you walk <laughs> in that school. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Lloyd. Mr. Rogers, I understand she was very patient with me while I was down there, but uh, you did not come in with your shoes dirty. She'd get you. Next person I want to recognize is school food services, and I need to apologize because her son lied to her on Mother's Day. So it's my pleasure to recognize Nora Mashburn, that's the 2017-2018 School Food Service Employee of the Year. <laughs> yeah. Nora is described as coming to work every day with a smile on her face, and every cafeteria needs a Nora. One of her coworkers said, you never have to worry about dirty pots or pans lying around. Nora has them in the dishwasher before you can turn around, and if there was a floor mopping contest, Nora would win, hands down. It is my pleasure to present The Flash, who got lied to, I'm sorry, Miss Nora Mashburn, the Haywood County School Food Service Employee of the Year. <laughs> Miss Mashburn, we'll take care of your son after this meeting, okay? <laughs> It's my pleasure to introduce the office support person. Rhonda Hargrove is the 2017-2018 Haywood County School Office Support Employee of the Year. Rhonda has worked for Haywood County Schools for 15 years and is currently at Bethel Middle School. A teacher at Bethel Middle School said, Rhonda does the behind scenes magic to make certain that our front line work goes well. Another said, Rhonda has an amazing work ethic and wonderful sense of humor. She keeps track of money as well as many other tasks her attention to detail and knowledge of her job help her to be product proactive rather than reactive when a need arises. I'm pleased to introduce Rhonda Hargrove, Haywood County Schools Office Support Employee of the Year. <laughs> 2017-2018 Maintenance Employee of the Year is Ricky Caldwell. Ricky has been with our school system since 1994, and especially as painting and is now the lead painter in our maintenance department. His coworker said of him, Ricky is conscientious about his work and makes sure everything is just right for each job. He's a hard worker, dependable, and works out all the details before getting started on the job. It's my pleasure to recognize Ricky Caldwell as Haywood County Schools Maintenance Employee of the Year. Next, we're going to recognize an recognize our instructional support employee of the year. 
This year, we are pleased to recognize Kristen Kane as the Instructional Support Employee of the Year. <laughs> Kristen has worked for Haywood County Schools for 24 years and will retire at the end of this year. Her colleague said, <laughs> Kristen is a valuable member of Haywood County Schools. She has worked with thousands of students and families to help them navigate the world of special education. She provides families with support and takes the time to help them understand the placement of their child. Kristen goes above and beyond to help teachers know the best ways to teach students with disabilities and to use their strengths to help accommodate their needs. It is my pleasure to recognize Kristen Kane as the 2017-18 Haywood County Schools Instructional Support Employee of the Year. <laughs> now we have instructional technology, and I don't think Nate could be here tonight. The 2017-18 Instructional Technology Employee of the Year is Nate Haas. Nate is about to complete his seventh year with the schools. He has a passion for his job and is well known throughout the schools for his excellent work. Nate is a positive member of our team and finishes his work in a timely manner. He is a great representative for Haywood County Schools. It is my pleasure again to announce Nate Haas as the Instructional Technology Employee of the Year. <laughs> Transportation. We're going to recognize Lee Trantham that is the 2017-18 Transportation Employee of the Year. <laughs> Lee has worked for our bus garage for 29 years. His colleague said, Lee is an excellent mechanic. This year he has taken a supervisory role in mentoring less experienced mechanics and done very well. He gets the job done and is willing to help wherever needed. It is my pleasure to recognize Lee Trantham as the Transportation Employee of the Year. <laughs> Next we have our Teacher Assistant of the Year, Brenda Smith. Brenda is the Haywood County Schools Teacher Assistant in the Year and works for the Exceptional Ed Department at Pisgah High School. Brenda brings children to the cafeteria and helps them learn new skills. She strives to see all the special needs students happy and self-confident. Brenda is a great asset to our system and to our students. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Brenda Smith, the Teacher Assistant of the Year. And our last department is our after school care. Chris Hill is the 2017-18 Haywood County Schools After School Employee of the Year. Chris has worked at Meadowbrook for three years. His supervisor said, Chris goes above and beyond every day. If we need someone to drive a bus, he steps up. If we need someone to chaperone a trip, he steps up. He volunteers for PTO events and helps out at the front desk with the classroom teachers and in the cafeteria. Chris is someone we need to keep in Haywood County Schools and I can think of no, more, no one more deserving to be recognized. Chris graduated from HCC last Thursday with his Associate in Arts in General Education. His goal is to become a principal in our school system. It is with great pleasure I recognize Chris Hill as the Haywood County Schools After School Care Employee of the Year. Thank you all so much for what you do every day. We couldn't do it without you. If you want to come up here, we'll get your picture. Congratulations. Next on the agenda is Mark Shepard.
Mr. Chairman, members of the board, a lot of recognitions tonight. And we have some of our spring athletics to recognize. We still have just about all of our schools have teams still playing, which is a good thing. So we'll take care of the rest of those recognitions in, at the June board, board meeting. So first of all, we are going to have Casey Crook come around uh, for Pisgah's recognitions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two birds with one stone. Uh, thank you all for having us again. As always, I'll be very brief. I've got a gentleman here that's going to introduce a very uh, special honor that one of our, our men's golfers received this year. So, uh, Coach Bentley Rogers. Good evening. Um, I'd like to introduce to you guys Alex Boone. Alex Boone is uh, the 2018 Mountain Six Conference Player of the Year. He had an average score this year. A score for the team was a 79. He played in our one slot. Um, his two-day total for the conference was a 153, which earned him the lowest individual score. And like I said, the Mountain Six Conference Player of the Year. Okay, so now we're going to have uh, Tuscola's athletic director and Gardner come around for their recognition. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, thanks for having us uh, tonight. I'd like to uh, thank you for the opportunity to bring forward uh, Nathan Messer and our men's basketball team for a high academic performance. So Nathan Messer is our men's basketball coach. Uh, first of all, let me give you a little background information about this GPA award that we end up getting. Uh, three years ago, me and Coach Gardner started this, uh, you can say, battle about who had the highest GPA against the boys and the girls. And so it started snowballing. Uh, then she sent me an email, and I was like in shock. I was like, uh-oh, we're in trouble. I said, this is not going to be good. And I look, we end up getting the highest GPA in the state for boys basketball which was a 3.77 unweighted GPA. So I got a couple of our players with us. First one is a freshman, uh, Nate Bradford. Junior, Patrick Broom. Out of our, we had 12 kids on the team. Two of them had a 3.0 or better. Uh, the rest of them was 3.5 and better. Uh, the two we have here today is a 3.8 and a 3.9 uh, GPA. I said this at my banquet. Uh, this is a testament to their parents. Uh, their parents put this, you know, I just helped them get there, but their parents are the ones that put that in them to have uh, good GPAs, and I really appreciate everything they've done for us. Oh, cool. Can I? Okay, so now we're moving over to middle school, and we have Waynesville Middle School represented here tonight, but uh, their, their principal is not able to still be here. He was here a little while ago, and their athletic director, they are at the, um, the conference soccer championship game, which we just heard they won. Oh, wow. 
So we'll make certificates and bring them around for official recognition next month. But uh, that's good news. But for now, we have Coach Vienna Lopresti and Bob Clark here to recognize the Waynesville Middle School track guys. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight to take the time to recognize our middle school athletes. We really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to point out that we are only two of the 10 coaches that we have on our middle school staff. Um, we're missing Brad Dotson, Stephen Strickland, Gary Albrecht, Kevin Fitzgerald, William Yates, Ferris Rogers, Tara Hogan, and Monica Fight. And I say this because I am the coach for paperwork and parents and getting the kids where they're supposed to be, but it's really our coaches that have worked with these athletes to get them where they're, where they're supposed to be. Um, I have five athletes with me tonight. You guys will come here, stand here. So before you are five athletes who traveled on Saturday, May 5th to Waxhall, North Carolina. Uh, they represented Waynesville Middle School in the middle school state track meet, which is a really big deal. Um, and so in first place for high jump, um, jumping six feet, and in second place for long jump, jumping 18 feet, five and three quarter inches, uh, we have Coleman Bryson, so state championship. <laughs> Next before you, I have Justice Pamplin. He is also a state champion. Um, in first place for triple jump, he jumped 38 feet and 10 and a half inches. Um, and so congratulations, Justice. Both of these boys set records for our school. Third, I have Rosalind Gonzalez. Um, she placed second place in our discus, throwing 87 feet. Congratulations, Rosalind. <laughs> Third, I have Andy Brown, who threw second place discus, um, throwing 106 feet and nine inches, and he is wearing a boot. So he showed up, this happened the day before, and he still um, won second place. Congratulations. <laughs> And our fifth athlete representing us at the middle school state track meet is Luke Parrish. Um, his personal best time for uh, running the 1600, which is a mile, is five minutes and 14 seconds. Um, he placed 13th, and for the 3200, which is two miles, he was 14th, running it at 12.08. Congratulations. He did win both of them, yes. Yes. What is exceptional about these athletes is that they got to go to the state meet and they competed against 40 athletes in their events um, and came out on top. So we are incredibly blown away by the talent that they possess. Um, these students have an opportunity to go to nationals and the Junior Olympics and, and compete and represent us. So please give them a round of applause. This time I'm going to call for a one minute recess and uh, like to say thank you to my vice chair for taking over this evening and uh, this is real short notice. I should have told him over the weekend, but I forgot all about <laughs> tomorrow morning having to be in Greenville, North Carolina. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, we'll take a short recess. At this time I'll call the meeting back to order. Um, board members, I hope you have had a chance to look at the um, both the open and closed minutes for April. And at this time, I'd entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So move, Mr. Chairman. Motion for Mr. Kirkpatrick with a second for Mr. Rogers. 
Any discussion? Are there being none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the open session. Has anyone signed up, Ms. King, for open session? Thank you. Okay, so we can move on. The next item is the community eligibility provision for Hazelwood Elementary for Ms. Francis. Chairman Francis, board members, Dr. Nolte, um, I'm coming to you to present an opportunity for Hazelwood Elementary to join the community eligibility program that Clyde, North Canton, and Central Haywood High School currently participate in. This will allow all the students there to eat breakfast and lunch free of charge. Um, the risk factor of adding them to this program is very minimal. Um, it would be need to see an increase of 23 students at breakfast and 33 students at lunch. I've spoke with Ms. Rogers. She's very interested in participating and assures me she will help me do whatever we need to do to make sure we reach that goal. So I, I would ask for your approval tonight to add them to our list. Okay. This is an excellent program, and I'm glad that we can participate in, in this. Uh, at this time, do I hear a motion to approve the eligibility for Hazelwood Elementary? I will. Mr. Clark made the motion. Do I hear a second? Yes. Mr. Dr. Bobby Rogers. Any discussion? There being none, let's take a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'd also like to briefly mention that after our last board meeting, USDA sent out a memo stating that if the child nutrition program had a positive fund balance, they would not require us to increase lunch prices this year. We've increased our prices by 10 cents since 2011-12, and this year we can um, leave it at what we had from last year. If, with your approval, I'd like to continue at 255 and 280 for the coming school year. Uh, do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do we need to take a motion on that, or just does it? Well, it's, we added that increase into the budget, but we can fix okay, that. Okay, so we do at need to. Date. We probably do need to make a, a motion to leave the prices of the lunches for next school calendar year the same. And we'll revise the budget in the Okay. Fall. Do I hear a motion to leave the lunch prices the same for next year? Mr. Clark made the motion. Sit I hear a second. Mr. Dr. Bobby Rogers. Any discussion on this? I think this will be, you know, really good for our, our families next year. They can go ahead and budget that there's not gonna be a change there. Any other discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Ms. You. Francis. Next on the agenda is an update for our calendar from Ms. Valliere. Members of the board, Chairman Francis, you have for your approval the revised calendar waiving June 15th for students. Okay, at this time, um, we're, the calendar is up for, um, an, I guess, an update um, to waive the last day, which is June 15th, and make that a mandatory work day for Correct. teachers instead Correct. of school, or instead of the students. Do I hear a motion to change the calendar at this time? Dr. Rogers made the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Clark? So. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. So the kids get out one day earlier now. I'll be happy about that. Yes. All right. Next on the agenda is Mr. Mark Shepard for policies. I've got anything to do this time of year. Okay, <laughs> members of the board. So before you, you have 24 policies for first grade. These are from the spring update list from the North Carolina School Boards Association. And um, I don't think all of them will be ready for, um, for a vote for approval next month, but I think most of them probably will be, but they're up there for everybody to read and take a look at now anyway. Okay, at this time, those policies are up for first reading, so we will table those for 30 days for public input. 
Okay, and then for second read, we have 61440, Student Wellness Policy. Okay. Mr. Chairman, just how I'd like to make a motion. We approve uh, 6140, Student Wellness Policy. Okay, we have a motion on the floor for Mr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Henson, second. Do we have any discussion about the Student Wellness Policy? Okay, there being none at this time, uh, we'll take a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Anything else? <coughs> Thank you very much. All right, next on the agenda is the financial reports. Mr. Henson. Okay, first up, I put this in the form of a motion to purchase a new driver's ed card car with the state funds. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to purchase a new driver's ed car. Uh, using state funds that are already, I think, there uh, to purchase that. Do I hear a second? I'll say. Mr. Clark with a second. Any discussion? Now, does this go on top of, did we not buy a car last year? Also? We bought, we did. We, did we buy two we last year? Two. Yeah. Bought two. We bought two. So this will be three. Now, so this is extra money the state's just given us? So can we use it on anything else other than driver education car, didn't we? We could use it on anything else in the driver's ed program, but not, I mean, that is that is our need right now is another car <laughs> to replace one of our oldest ones. Oldest one. How many more old cars do you have? There's four uh, Ford Tauruses that are really beyond the point of putting very much money into repairs at all. I mean, I, I vaguely remember we sort of talked about trying to get some, seemed like the money was, had a little extra money going forward. Yeah, the, the program is funded at a point where you should be able to re replace cars regularly. We keep about a 10 car fleet, so if we do one a year, we're, you know, we're averaging 10 year old cars. Okay. And they live pretty hard in the driver's ed program. <laughs> right, oh yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, Mr. Henson. Okay, I put this in the form of a motion to approve paying the lead driver's ed instructors at Pisgah and Tuscola a $600 additional responsibility stipend. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Mr. Clark, second. Any discussion on the motion on the floor? I believe we did this last year as well. So this is something we've, that we've done this. This is the same thing. I mean, it's not above and beyond what they are making now. I mean, are we doing this every year that you're doing it? The idea is that we're giving one instructor at each of the high schools $600 extra for their administrative duties they do to help make the program run. But that's not, that's just, a yearly thing. That's I mean, right. One time yeah, a year. it's, it's not six hundred dollars on top of last year. Six hundred on top of the last. It's, no, no, no. It's a, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not six hundred on top of six hundred on no, top of six hundred. Six hundred per year. Uh, okay. We've done this the last two years. Okay. Yeah, that's why. I know. I just. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. At this time, we'll take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And next up is a motion to approve the regular monthly financial reports. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to approve the regular monthly financial reports. Do I hear a second? second. Mr. Rogers, second. Any discussion? Now, is this a regular monthly financial report? <laughs> yes, Mr. Kerber. Okay, thank you. Nothing else has been added. <laughs> All right, at this time, uh, we'll take a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Any further business from the Finance Committee, Mr. Henson? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I know I'm on that committee, so I know all about the, the things we have to go through. So I appreciate all you do. Um, next on the agenda is the SEC salary study by Dr. Bill Nolte. 
members of the board, we spent uh, uh, a good amount of time going over the study report from school efficiency consultants at our work session on Thursday. Uh, as you will recall, we started working with SEC in 2014. Uh, uh, they were teaching us how to do uh, ABC transfers to be more efficient. Uh, about a year ago, uh, after meeting with you all and the commissioners together, uh, it was suggested that they take a look at our finances again to see if they could help us be more efficient. And you all authorized a, con a contractual agreement with them last May or April, last spring, to look at salaries. Uh, after a great deal of study, and uh, which we shared with you on Thursday, we would like to recommend uh, that you all um, approve the reinstatement of salary steps for approximately 375 employees many of those who have been frozen on the pay scales for up to 13 years. We think that it is a very sustainable correction to the pay scale. Uh, this, uh, if approved by the board, in conjunction with what you all just did with the teacher supplement, would go a long way, I think, in helping us uh, keep employees in county the, uh, the uh, initial cost would be uh, approximately 350474 uh, Angie and I have looked at the budget very, very thoroughly, and we think it's very sustainable and would like for you to consider uh, recommending that. I uh, would like to ask you to consider approving that beginning with July 2018. I would like to go ahead and make a motion that we approve the SEC SEC salary study uh, as given to us at the work session. Okay. At this time, I have a motion from uh, Mr. Kirkpatrick to approve the SEC salary schedule, and second. Mr. Rogers has a second. Uh, any discussion? I know we had a work session on this, and and I was, I think they did a really good job about looking at all the positions and 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 trying to get us back on par where we need to be. So uh, I was very they impressed. Did a good with job. It. I think Miss Angie did a good job, and Dr. Nolte. Thank y'all so much because that's. Uh, Definitely need to. We got to do what we can for these yeah, teachers. Exactly. And there are other staff members in this county. Yeah, and I believe one of the main one of the concerns that come out of the work session was, is it a long term thing that we can take Society. care of? And I think they've already answered that question. I mean, I know Miss Gardner is pretty tight with the money. If she didn't think it's gonna <laughs> yeah, work, she, she would not, say, she yeah. told <laughs> "Make it work." If it's it wasn't gonna work, she would have told. No, it's up to her to make it work now. Right now, it's up to you. To make it work. <laughs> we can take this step now, and hopefully, we can yeah. continue to make these steps forward. Uh, uh, this it's and very thank well you, deserved, Dr. Bill. gentlemen. I call I it thank you I call it Angie math. Angie math. Okay, <laughs> it's very conservative. All right. Just okay, so we've got a um, motion on the on the floor. Uh, any other discussion? This time we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. On behalf of our employees, especially those um, non-licensed folks who have been frozen for a long time, I want to thank you for that. I think that will go a long way in helping us keep people. And I also want to thank Angie um, and several of our department people who worked very hard to scrutinize their budget, um, Allison in school food service and Todd in particular. So I just wanted to thank you on behalf of those people and Thank the other folks who worked on it. I apologize for a late question, but can I ask one question? Absolutely. This will take effect August 1, is that correct? We would like for it to take effect July 1 because July we 1. do have some 12-month clerical and custodial uh, folks who have been frozen a really, we'd like, a really long time. We would like for it to take effect at the beginning of the fiscal year. Okay. Fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. July. I want to say Chuck said on his way out that he supported this 100%. He told us to make sure we said that. Yes, it's very well deserved. So thank you all very Indeed. much. Long over to you. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nolte. Next on the agenda is the appointment to the HCC Board of Trustees. 
Uh, earlier tonight, we uh, did the interviews for the appointments. We had three excellent candidates, um, Dr. Uh, Doris Green, Jay Sapiro, and Tom McNeil. Uh, they all did a fantastic job. Um, I think that we would be very well served for any of those three to uh, represent us on the HCC board. Uh, at this time, do I hear a motion for um, one of these individuals uh, for uh, an appointment. I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and appoint Tom McNeil. He's already been there four years, like we've said before. Three good candidates that we had to come out. But I'd like to go ahead and make a motion, Mr. McNeil. We okay. keep him as an appointment. So we have a motion to keep Mr. Tom McNeil on for another term. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Dr. Bobby Rogers. Any discussion? Like you said, Mr. Francis, this is a <laughs> very wish we could choose all three of them. I tell you, we, we would be well represented. We already are, but this would be a great representation for us. So, uh, and, and I do thank all these candidates for, for applying for this position, definitely so. And uh, I thank them for willing to serve and on the Board of Trustees for the college to help our schools as, and our public schools as well. So, thank you. At this time, we'll take a vote. All those in favor for Dr. Tom McNeil to serve another four-year term on the ACC board for our school system? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Dr. Nolte, would you please let Mr. McNeil and the others know of our decision tonight? Yes, we will. Thank you. And next on the agenda is personnel. Vice Chair Francis and members of the board um, present the personnel for you that we have reviewed earlier in closed session. Uh, for your information, we have 28 separation from employment, three employee status changes, and two leave of absence. For your approval, we have five employments 69 status changes. Remember, we had 70 originally and pulled one, we had to, take one. To, to look at again before next month. Six substitutes, uh, one employee coach, and two administrator contracts. Okay. And we also have a leave of absence. Number seven. Yes, one leave of absence. Thank you. I missed that one. One leave of absence. All right. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the personnel as presented. Motion to approve. Mr. Henson made the motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, by Mr. Burnett. Uh, any discussion? There being none, let's vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Board, is there anything else that needs to come before us for the this month? There being no more business, meeting adjourned.